Hey, this is Oren Zucker, and on behalf of Dan Eberts, welcome to the very first Beatnik 4 After Effects tutorial. Beatnik is a new time remapping tool we created based on syncing markers from one layer, what we call the master layer, to markers from a second layer, or the reference layer. The process can be as easy as using the one-click automatic mode or a more versatile manual mode. Let's go over the basics. First, let me show you a few quick builds using the default setup. I'm going to select an audio layer and a video layer and click Do It. And it's done. Okay, let's try another one. We're just going to switch the ease to back and see what happens. And now we're going to switch ease to linear, turn montage on, and turn retime off. So you can see with a few quick UI changes, you can do some pretty cool stuff pretty quickly. Let me show you what's going on when you click Do It. Step one. First, you have to select an audio layer. You can use any kind of audio as long as it has its video switch off. That's how it knows to use it as a reference layer. The timing of these markers will be used to sync the video to. Step two is select the video layer. Audio can be on this or not, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna ignore it and turn it off anyway. This becomes the master layer or the layer that you wanna retime. Step three is click do it. So what's going to happen is first Beatnik will pre-compose the master video layer and place it in a Beatnik folder in the project window and label it orange. If it's set to beat detect, it will convert the audio on the reference layer to keyframes, analyze it using the beat detection algorithm, apply markers to the original audio layer within the work area, and label it yellow. Then it will go back and delete the audio keyframes layer. As I mentioned, this is the reference layer. When that's done, it'll count the markers on the reference layer and apply the same number of markers evenly spaced on the master layer. Finally, it'll sync the two together, assigning each master marker a corresponding reference marker. The master markers don't physically move, they just virtually line up with the reference markers, thus retiming the master. You can adjust the timing by adding, deleting, or moving the markers. And that's it. That's the basic overview. Let's move on to the main UI breakdown. I'll go over the toolbox in another tutorial. First, markers. In automatic mode, markers can be created using the built-in beat detector, audio keyframes for use with trap code sound keys, or the BPM mode. Both beat detector and audio keyframes work the same way, relying on your choice of two of Dan's audio analysis algorithms, represented by these waveform icons the default algorithm is for tracks that has lots of transients of different heights. The other is for tracks with strongly defined beats. Select the one that best suits your track, or if it one doesn't work, just try the other. The threshold slider will raise or lower the level the beat detector will use to identify a peak. The sensitivity slider is active only on the more complex algorithm. It's a secondary control that dynamically adjusts the threshold after a peak is hit so other slightly lower peaks within its immediate vicinity don't get markers placed on them. If you want a more regular beat, select the BPM mode. It'll disable the sliders and activate a number entry box where you can enter the BPM. If you don't know what it is, click the info box here where we'll post some online resources. One note, when you use BPM, make sure you set the start of your work area to the first beat. This will be the location for the first marker. Lastly, we've supplied an Include Numbers option. This might come in handy if you're building manually. I'll go over that in another tutorial. The other half of the UI is Sync. This part of the UI is responsible for the expressions applied to the master markers, 
and controls the strength, timing, and sequence of the time remapping. Ease essentially controls the strength of the effect. It also has some wacky mixes and a stop motion effect at the bottom. There's examples of all these on the FAQ page. One thing I do want to point out is the difference between a stop ease and a go ease. As you know, if you look at a regular ease in and out, the curves flatten out at the beginning and at the end. This results in a video that will pause at each beat. That's what we call a stop ease. We thought the opposite worked really well for beatnik, where the video pauses between markers and moved on the beat. So we use that, labeled go, as the default, but we included both options since either of them can come in handy. Before I introduce retime and montage, I need to introduce a basic concept of Beatnik called a sequence. A sequence is the time on the master that exists from one marker to the frame before the next marker. If you keep that in mind, it'll be easy to grasp what these next couple sections do. Retime has four options. On, as you expect, squeezes and stretches the time so that the video will speed up or slow down based on the marker location. Stretch only will stretch the time but not speed it up. What happens at the markers that would normally require the segment to speed up, it will just cut from one segment to the next. Squeeze only is the exact opposite, only allowing for speed ups. The thing to remember about this and the upcoming off is that you'll get freezes when a segment needs to be stretched, but it won't cut between sequences that require speeding up. Off will allow for neither speeding up or slowing down and will maintain the original speed of the video throughout the clip. You'll get lots of cuts and some freezes. Moving on to one of my favorites, Montage. This randomly reorganizes the sequence of the segments. Very cool if you need to do a quick edit, especially if your master has many cuts strung together, but will also work well with single clips too. And so that's the basics. I'm going to cover the manual modes and the toolbox in another tutorial. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. On behalf of Dan Eberts, I'm Oren Zucker. Thanks for watching.